50 people were arrested. Welcome to the WMNF Afternoon Call-In Show, the last call. You were just listening to a special uh, special presentation of Al Jazeera English. We couldn't bring you letters and politics today, so we brought you a little bit about today's Al Jazeera English. I'm Sean Canan. In a moment, we're going to open up the phone lines to take your calls. The number is 813-239-9663. You can also email your questions or comments to dj at wmnf.org. Our topic today is dog tethering, animal tethering. Today's Hillsborough Board of County Commissioners, they considered an ordinance that would limit the chaining of dogs on an owner's property. And our guest today is Barbara Lepresti. Welcome, Barbara. Hi, Sean. Glad to be here. Thanks. And she's advocating for a strict ordinance that forbids tethering at all times. And she is going to talk to us in a minute. But first, I want to play two sound bites from today's Hillsborough County Commission meeting. And this was during the... the um, public comment section of the, of the meeting, we heard, I think it was nine people that Janelle told us spoke out for a strong ordinance and two people spoke out for um, this, this less strong ordinance. The first person you're going to hear is Gregory Douglas. He's going to talk about how the current, as it's currently written, it allows owners to tether their dogs for up to 30 minutes every eight hours. Gregory Douglas is a Tampa attorney. He represents governmental organizations that prosecute neglectful pet owners. He said areas with similar ordinance have a hard time making their cases stick. Is, is right. ambiguous statutes so, or statutes that are hard to prove? The ordinances, the ordinance that you are considering in the amendments there too, regarding a weight limitation, regarding 30-minute time limit, and exempting agricultural land just makes no sense. And it'll lead to seconds. ambiguous. Uh, discussions in court cases, as well as uh, failure to be able to prove anything in court based on uh, the impossible. That was Gregory Douglas, a Tampa attorney who represents governmental organizations that prosecute neglectful pet owners. He's for a strong tethering ordinance. And there were also people at the public hearing, at the, at the during public comment rather, who spoke out for this the, uh, the one that's put forward by Animal Services. And one of those people was Vivian Baca. She's a longtime volunteer for an animal shelter. She says she do that, that that shelter does not euthanize animals. And she said the time restrictions on tethering are enforceable, and they're also important to protect the responsible pet owners like her. There's a lot made about the 30-minute rule. Animal Services has always used sworn statements of witnesses <coughs> in investigating abuse complaints. A sworn statement of a witness that they observed a dog tethered for longer than 30 minutes is sufficient to act on the law. People, animal services does not need to be sitting outside looking at the five seconds, timing them with their watch to make sure Mike's that 30 on. minutes of That was Vivian Baca, a volunteer for an animal shelter that she says doesn't euthanize animals. And our guest in the studio is Barbara Lepresti. Barbara Lepresti is is pushing for an ordinance on tethering on chaining of dogs outside that's stricter than the one that's being considered by the animal that was brought to us by animal services and you disagree with Vivian Baca and with this ordinance as it's written now because you think that 30 minute rule is it would be hard to enforce isn't that right yes that's that's absolutely correct uh, many other counties throughout the state of Florida, including hundreds of counties throughout the United States, have already enacted an anti-tethering ordinance that is proven to be effective. It basically states that if you're going to tether or chain your dog up outside, you must be, as a responsible dog owner, you must be present with that dog. When we put into the language of an anti-tethering ordinance that there is a 30-minute time limit, it becomes very difficult to enforce. This is not my opinion. This is information I've learned and gathered for myself from speaking with so many directors, animal control 
directors and animal control officers throughout Florida and the United States. They all simply state that unattended responsible tethering simply does not exist. It's very difficult to enforce and if I may I'd like to give an example of why. If you say to the community a 30 minute time limit is the maximum amount of time you're allowed to tie up your dog. Many people who already leave their dogs tied up outside in the extreme Florida heat exposed to the extreme weather that we have, the thunderstorms, the elements such as uh, wasps and snakes and other dogs that come into their territory. These individuals may say when the animal control officer comes and knocks on their door, but officer, I just put my dog outside 10 minutes ago. How do you enforce it? Animal control currently states that they will have an officer sit outside of the home for 30 minutes and monitor that dog owner. We all know that animal control is already uh, working with a limited number of staff and they have a tough budget to boot. So my recommendation is, is that we follow suit with hundreds of other counties and put an ordinance into effect that's already proven to be effective. It is a no-brainer. There's no need for Hillsborough County commissioners to reinvent the wheel with new language for Hillsborough County, language that's unique to our county. Hillsborough County is not that much different from Miami-Dade, from Sarasota, Pembroke Pines. I could go on and on with a list of counties that have uh, had this ordinance in effect and speak very positively regarding its effectiveness. Let's tell our listeners what's in this animal services ordinance as they've written it. Is that who, who has written this ordinance and um, how that differs from what you think, what you just described? One of the things that I learned when I first requested that Hillsborough County consider an anti-tethering ordinance was that we have a animal advisory board here in Hillsborough County that meets once a month. It's the uh, third, third, excuse me, third Wednesday of every month at the County Center building in downtown Tampa. That meeting is currently not televised, uh, which is unfortunate. Many of our county meetings are televised. We have a cell phone tower committee that is televised, yet the Animal Advisory Committee is the one committee in Hillsborough County that is not televised. Uh, so I would encourage people to attend these meetings if at all possible. But the Animal Advisory Committee created this language in conjunction with Animal Services staff. And that language consists of the following points. They are requesting a 30 minute time limit, which as I mentioned is unenforceable. It certainly sounds good. It seems fair enough to leave your dog tied up outside for 30 minutes. Uh, the problem is enforceability. The second issue is the agricultural community. They would like to see this ordinance uh, as uh, the agricultural community be exempt from having to abide by this ordinance when their dogs are working on the farms. The third issue is stamina exhibits. Dogs that are at stamina exhibits would be exempt from this law. Most individuals do not know what stamina exhibits entail. Uh, I can tell you from my own research and from uh, eyewitnesses uh, that I've spoken to here in Hillsborough County, stamina exhibits can consist of uh, events where dogs are showing their strength showing their strength by pulling thousands of pounds of cinder blocks, showing their strength by pulling sometimes John Deere tractor trailers. So again, why are we exempting dogs that are at stamina exhibits? This law would also uh, indicate that there need not be any weight restriction. If you have ever seen a chained dog that lives on that chain for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, its entire life, as I have. I have seen a dog from the time it was a puppy till the day it died because it strangulated itself on the chain. 
I have watched that dog with a heavy chain attached to its body day in, day out, exposed to all the elements I mentioned, living in one small quarter of space, and you think about that much time on that chain, that's a long period of time for, a, say for instance, a 40 pound dog to have a 80 pound chain attached to it. So we're also, I'm also, asking for a restriction on the weight of the chain. They don't have to be necessarily going out and weighing every collar, but at least, the very least that we should do is put a law into effect that states there should be a weight restriction because what your idea of fair weight is, is very different from mine. What your idea of uh, proper tethering is very different from mine. There are many people that might say, well, there are currently laws that are in effect that protect dogs that are tethered. There is no law against leaving your dog tied up 24 hours a day for its entire life. So I would ask people to please keep that in mind. We're going to go to the phones in just a second. I want to give, give people the phone number. It's 813-239-239. 9663 if you'd like to join this conversation. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. My name is Sean Canan. This is the Last Call program. Our guest is Barbara Lopresti, and we're talking about a possible Hillsborough County tethering ordinance that, that Hillsborough County commissioners are considering um, currently. They, they considered it today, and they'll be considering it again in a meeting in a couple of, in, a, in about a month. Let's go now to Ken in Tampa. Ken? Off. He's got bad noise. Yeah. Okay, let me get this real quick. Oh, just one? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, just one. Okay. WMNF, call in and have your first name and where you're calling from. Alright, John, hang on one moment. Ken, thanks for, thanks for those thoughts. Your phone line is a little noisy. We're going to pull you down, and um, we're going to let Barbara respond. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that if we continued with the mindset, uh, similar to Ken, of 100 years ago, child slavery would still be in effect. Uh, women would not have the same rights as men. Slavery would still be in effect. Ken, I would encourage you to study animal behavior and learn that animals do have feelings. They can feel anxiety, they can feel fear, and they can feel boredom. When you leave a dog tethered, chained up in a yard 24, seven hours, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for its entire life, I assure you that you would not want to send your child into the area of that dog because what it creates is a public safety concern. I want Hillsborough County to be a better place to live for all of us, not only for the members of Hillsborough County, but for our furry friends too. Thank you for that call, Ken. We're going to go now to John in Tampa. John, hi, what's on your mind? Call 
All right. Uh, thanks so much for that, John, for advocating um, shying people up. Uh, I'm not sure if that was in seriousness or, or if you're just trying to be um, be silly or whatever. But uh, so, what do you think about John's comments that uh, that Hillsborough County has better fish to fry, bigger fish to fry? Well, I just think ignorance is bliss. All right. Let's go on to the next caller. Um, thanks for that call, John. Richmond in Tampa, are you there? Richard, sorry. So do you support a, a strict ordinance prohibiting tethering of animals in Hillsborough County? All right. Thanks so much, Richard. Thanks for that call. Um, we're we're going to move on to Lloyd in Lakeland. Hi, Lloyd. Uh, what would you like to say? Well, thanks for thank you for that call, Lloyd. Let's ask Barbara. Uh, that brings up two questions. One is, um, Lloyd is in Lakeland. What is Polk County's rules on tethering? And second of all, Lloyd's idea of making it uh, having a longer lead and having having a little bit more um, freedom than just being tied to a tree, let's say. Well, currently, uh, this ordinance is not in effect in Polk County. Uh, I think it is only a matter of time before we as a society wake up to the awareness uh, of this issue and uh, it will be a statewide law. So if it's not passed here in Hillsborough County, it's my uh, hope that this issue will go to uh, a statewide law. Do you have any allies in the state legislature? Have you talked to any state senators or state representatives about something like this statewide? Uh, we're heading in that direction. All right, thanks. Let's go now to Bradenton. Kevin is on the line. Hi, Kevin. What would you like to say? WMNF, caller may have your first name and where you're calling from. David in Tampa. All righty, sir. We'll be right with you.
Uh, Kevin, thanks for those passionate thoughts. Um, we can tell where you're coming from. Um, any thoughts, Barbara? No, I um, am very interested to hear from more callers that might uh, support this issue. I, for one, receive hundreds of emails every day from individuals that are out there in the field going to homes trying to talk some common sense into individuals that have dogs that are left out on chains. I have friends that have uh, rescued some of these dogs and many of these dogs have so much fur and skin missing from around their neck because they've been on a chain for their entire life. We're going to go to email right now before we take another call. Paul says, please do not encourage a broad-based government-enforced law on tethering dogs based upon the abuse and ignorance of a relatively small number of cases. We do not need it. Focus on the abusers, not all that tether. And that brings up an interesting question, Barbara. Um, what's, is there a difference? Is there a, a range of people who tether? Is there, obviously, we're familiar with the cases of where dogs are being abused. Is it possible that maybe there could be people who aren't abusing their animals who also tether? Then they should have no concerns regarding the ordinance being passed. This ordinance really is for those individuals that may not have uh, a clear understanding of what is and what is not in or humane treatment of animals. All right, back to the phone lines. We're going to go to Ernest now. Hi, Ernest. What's on your mind? I'm doing great. How about you? Ernest, when you say free roaming, are you talking about free roaming inside of your fenced yard or free roaming out? Okay, and they just, and they happen to escape. All right, thank you for that call. Barbara, what's, uh, you know, that would be an alternative to tethering is have, have dogs loose in the backyard that's fenced, but then if they get out, what, um, how, how do you address that? Uh, if a dog is trying to get out of a fenced-in yard and you have a rambunctious dog, I'm sure that that dog owner is aware of the fact that their own dog is rambunctious. Uh, they may see digging in the backyard. That's a clear sign to that dog owner that perhaps they should consider walking their dog more often. Uh, any animal uh, would be bored, confined to the same backyard day after day for year after year. Uh, if you cannot walk your dog, ask a neighbor to help you. Um, I'm trying to form a group that will volunteer to help those individuals that cannot walk their dogs. Uh, but uh, when you take responsibility for owning a dog, uh, you take on that responsibility that you are responsible for not only the safety of your dog, but the safety of your neighbors and your community as well. And uh, I just want to remind folks that when you leave a dog outside in the backyard and it does become bored, uh, of course it's going to try to escape your yard. Um, it also may end up barking a lot. And right now, Animal Services does not respond to nuisance calls. So if you move into a new home and the next door neighbors happen to have a barking dog that barks, all night long, there's no reprieve for you. There's no reprieve for that dog. Thanks for that call, Ernest. And so it looks, it's, you made up, you suggested the idea of volunteers like Boy Scouts, and that's also, it sounds like something that, that maybe um, Barbara is suggesting. Maybe there's a, a way for you to find some volunteers that could, that could walk a dog that's, that feels like it's cooped up in the backyard. But thank you for that call. Let's go now to Stephen in Tampa. Hi, Stephen.
first names and where you're calling from. Lisa from Tampa. One moment. Well, I would agree with you. Uh, there are many people that tether their cats, um, and S Stephen, S I would encourage someone like yourself who has, you know, uh, these suggestions to present them uh, at the upcoming Hillsborough County uh, uh, Animal Advisory Board meeting. Uh, you can find more information on that at Hillsboro. Uh, dot, org. dot org and uh, you should be presenting these ideas um, to the Animal Advisory Board for consideration so that a new law can be placed into effect for that. Stephen, thank you so much for calling. We're going to go now to Lisa in Tampa. Hi, Lisa. What's on your mind? Do you need to respond to her? Can we go to the last call? You do want to respond? Thank you for that phone call, Lisa. I appreciate that. Let's go now to Dan. Dan, you're in Tampa, and you might be the last call on last call. Can you ask your question or make your comment fairly quickly? All right, Dan, thank you for that. I have to cut you off. I'm sorry because you are the last call on last call. I want to thank our guest, Barbara Lepresti. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. And you are listening to WMNF Tampa, St. Petersburg. I want to thank everybody who called. This has been the WMNF Drive Time News call-in segment, The Last Call. I'm Sean Canan. Maria Oliver has been our engineer. Join us again tomorrow at 4 in the afternoon for all of the news from Tampa Bay and beyond. You can also get all the news first by following us on Facebook and Twitter at WMNF News. Tomorrow's call-in show, hosted by Mitch Perry on the Thursday edition of Last Call, I'll post every Wednesday. At, every Wednesday. Now please stay tuned for Surface Noise.